favor. The enemy general is fallen. They were no match. Well, it's the summer of 198, and the last of Ma Tang's armies just ran home with a tail between their legs. They are out of the picture now. Ma Tang, the protector of the West, kind of just rolled over and died. It was a pretty pathetic war. Zhang Liao beat the crap out of one of our generals, and after that, it was pretty much game blouses. So what we're going to see here is Lu Bu move southwards, but of course, kill one Hydra's head, and another takes his place. This time, it's the Yellow Turban Rebellion coming back with a vengeance in Jin Chang. So we got to worry about them. We have stabilized pretty well over the last eight or so turns. Economy still isn't amazing. But part of the problem is that both Zhang Liao and Lu Bu are incredibly expensive in terms of their salaries. So we've had to worry about that, and it means that eh, well, our economy hasn't blown up in the way that I'd really love to. But we have leveled up Chang'an. In one turn, actually, that will finish up and become a large city, which means we'll get more population. We'll have more of a food issue there. But overall, it'll be good because it'll allow us to build up our settlements more and hopefully get some more income. So we are going to take this little large town first and get our intimidation up because there's one thing I really want to do that I haven't been utilizing much in this campaign, which is making the Han Empire do what I want them to do. They are our vassals for a reason. Using that, using our intimidation to actually get some economic benefits from them, it's pretty important. So what we're going to do here is move on Wudu. We'll be open to events for sure. And that should be just a stop. So we're going to delegate that. And we are going to take the city. Victory was never in doubt. No, it wasn't. Not with Lu Bu and the Vanguard. So we've got 10 intimidation now, and we can spend that. This belongs to us now. Now, you need 30 intimidation to coerce a faction into doing something. I did not realize that army was there. Hello. Okay. I cannot. Man, yellow turbans. Gong du has got three full stacks, probably. He's got maybe one in Jin Chang the city. He's got this full stack in the horse pastures directly to our west. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be doing a lot of fighting with the Yellow Turban Rebellion. You would have thought by this time, in summer of 198, it would mostly be finished up. The way of peace would be put in the ground for good. Apparently not. They are surging here, and we're going to have some important battles to fight with them. But what we're going to do is go into diplomacy and check out the Han Empire. Because there's one thing that I really want to do, and that's just get some money out of them. Glad to see you. Glad to see you as well. That's so sweet. <laughs> all right. So all I'm going to do is request, let's see if we can get 4,000 out of them. Well, you can get a lot. The cool thing about Coerce is that it gives you a really nice bonus in this proposal deal thing, where you can actually get quite a bit of money. So let's see if we can go for 4,000 and maybe up it from there. We're going to propose that. And then coerce. So we've got 30 points to spend at the moment. That gives us a 1.2 bonus if we do it. So they should, they should agree to it. We will lose 30 of our intimidation, which means we will deal with some public order issues. But for all that money, I think that's actually probably worth it. And look, we're going to get some rebellions anyway. Just because in Anding, all our northerly provinces, we've been dealing with a lot of that anyway. Especially with all these like little tiny ass armies kind of reaving and roving through our stuff. So we're gonna propose the deal here. Prudence must win over pride. And we're gonna get four thousand out of that. That is very nice. Okay. So we lost all that, but it'll only be maybe three battles before we're back into um, menacing intimidation. So, I think if we keep flexing our muscles there, let's see if that, like, gives us a public order malice, or rather a diplomacy malice with that faction. I don't think it should. No, it doesn't. In fact, I think it gives us a bonus. So, we're gonna get, well, I don't know how much of that has to do with the treaty we just signed or some of the ones we've done recently, but plus 20 to our positive relationship there. I will take it. You give me money, and you like me because of it. I'll, <laughs> I'll take that all day long, son. Okay, so we got that signed. We did lose our intimidation, which means we do have the minus six public order and some corruption, but we'll try to get out of that as soon as possible and we'll have plenty of battles to fight. Let's so take out this army and the one in Jin Chang. We might lose our silk trader over here in on Ding. We've got Guo Xi moving out towards Lu Fan and trying to catch up, but we cannot on this turn. You can see that there is actually a relatively big malice to having hostile forces in your territory and one of the things that I have noticed so far that I've not been very impressed with the AI with 
is that they will roam through your territories and not actually do a lot of attacking. So what I've seen is that Winter will come, they'll take attrition, they'll kind of jerk themselves off in and around Chang'an deciding not to attack it, not even attacking Han Zong, which doesn't really have a fantastic garrison. And then they'll just kind of whittle themselves away until they can't actually take the garrison. Then they go bugger off somewhere else. So that's weird. I think that probably needs to get fixed. I don't see the point of moving enemy armies through my territory if you're not going to even raid. If you're not going to do anything, just stand there and look pretty. We do have to worry about Her Yi, though. Like I said, the Yellow Turban Rebellion is surging hard right now. He went to Ambush Dance right around here and might be trying to shoot the gap to go to the Jade Mine. So... We've got battles to fight, we've got more empires to build, and we've got some pretty crazy stuff coming your way. So I'm going to see what the AI does here, and we'll figure it out from there, but I think we're going to have a lot of big battles on the way. Okay, so we flexed our muscles in diplomacy a bit. Chang'an has just leveled up into a large city. The next upgrade is a small regional city. I'm not sure we're going to upgrade quite to that yet, because it'll give us an even bigger problem in terms of food in this region. I do want them to be relatively self-sufficient in terms of the food. So what we're gonna do as soon as we can is go to our reforms and research this. I think we're only about eight or so turns away from being able to do that. We have already researched agricultural tax relief and the next step would then of course be sharecropping. So we'll get that up and be able to create some more higher tier cities and farm buildings that will give us more food, kind of important because we need to be able to feed our people. Now, at the moment though, I do want to figure this one out. I want to finish up the regional levy. That's the next one I'm going to go for in three turns. That plus 10 replenishment is going to be so effing useful because one of the issues I've been having, you guys have seen it, plenty of casualty replenishment problems. It's just low in this game to start with, but any way we can buff it up, 10% is going to be a real nice boon and get us back into the fight a lot better. And especially with Lu Bu and Dong Zhuo, it's one of those factions that really requires you to fight a lot. So replenishment, super important because if you don't fight, you don't get your intimidation up and then you get those public order malices. So as soon as we get that, we'll get lots more battles going. But we do have a battle to fight right now. And that is with the Yellow Turbans who are right outside our settlement. Hopefully they will not try what to escape. So yeah, we are more than ready to fight them here. Cut them down. And On it looks marks. like we sh Leave none alive. Of course not. Okay. Yeah. See, I mean, some people say that it's okay. And I get that it makes it feel like a very large campaign map, which it most certainly is. And I get that we're not on the main road right now. <laughs> that triggers me a little bit. Like, that. That's five character links. And I don't have any more movement points this turn. That doesn't feel very good. Again, I don't want to spend 15 turns moving through my territory. So, eh, I think that that could probably get a little bit better. I don't know if you guys agree with me there. I feel like that's a little bit ridiculous. That's maybe like two miles, three miles, five miles, maybe. Like, that's not a very, not a very far distance. So, eh, okay, we'll try to catch them next turn. We are going to lose the Silk Trader. And because that's going to take an extra turn, it is possible he'll be able to move towards Han Zhang as well. Not gonna get our intimidation up this turn, but Chang'an is looking good and it's got a great garrison. So I Don't. bet you, yeah, it could definitely defend itself from this army anyway. So we'll try to kill that army next turn and then Han Zhang will also try to defend itself. Do have some public order malices in and ding, but we'll figure those out and deal with the rebellions as they come. And this guy will be my patroller between those three settlements, my breadbasket for my empire. With the patience of an old tiger, Lu Bu's ambush is going to work out here, and the claws about to sink into some yellow turban flesh. Now, I have been loving this campaign. I really do enjoy it. Lu Bu and Zhang Liao have some unfinished business with these boys. Should be a good time. But I do got to say, I don't know about you guys, I don't enjoy playing Ring Around the Rosie with the AI. I think that you should not have to abuse ambush dance to bring them to bear and actually fight a battle if they're walking through your territory. It's not very fun to continuously attack them and they move right out of range and always hang right outside. Any mod or any kind of update that gives the defending faction, the person who's in their own territory, more movement points to prevent that kind of shenanigans from going off all the time, I usually like to play with those. I think this is something that probably needs to get reworked a little bit because I just don't want to have to chase an enemy army for eight turns and them 
always be right on the edge of my movement points. It's just not very fun. So I don't want them to suicide themselves, but ultimately that's kind of what they were doing, right? Like they're just walking through my territory, taking attrition, being a bunch of jackasses. Now they're gonna die for it. So let's kill them. I'll see you on the battlefield. Zhang Liao and Liu Bu about to take some heads. I gotta say though, man, it is a gorgeous game. The heavy Zhilong cavalry looking sexy and they got the horse armor. I know a lot of you guys were wondering about that. Yes, that is getting added in. Looks like the heavy tiger and leopard cavalry for Cao Cao and these bad boys for Dong Zhuo and Lu Bu have got it. I don't know if any other cavalry have it, but it looks real nice, especially when we're in nighttime in the snow. Hold up. I'm about to end this man's whole career. Talk about a surround yellow turbans. Not going to be feeling good after this battle. I think very few of them will make it out of this one alive. Lu Bu going to go right after the healers and the scholars while Zhang Liao just charges in and causes a mass rout. So I think without further ado, we'll get it going. Get in there. Yeah, sure. Sure, man. We'll let them duel it out. We'll let Lu Bu kill him. And we'll make sure we're gonna complete this round off here. Okay. Do that duel, boys. Do the damn thing. I wanna see what happens. Lu Bu should be able to kill him pretty quick. We're gonna make sure we watch that killing blow for Zhang Liao if we can. Charging from behind. Yeah, it's just a complete mass route. They had no chance. The enemy unit flees! What cowards! Get him, Zhang Liao! Get him, my boy! And the battle OST is amazing too. Yeah, get some wushu in there. Will they accept any duels? I got no. No, of course they don't. Your words are as pathetic as you are. Here we go. All right, this should be the killing blow very soon. Oh, kill him, hero of Hofei! Murder him! I hope I'm not losing units right now. Look, the enemy run. I really like those animations. That looks really cool. Ooh. Got him in the stomach. Alright. Lu Bu, kill him and her. Him and her. And we'll finish this battle up. Okay, that was relatively simple. It's almost like when you get a complete perfect surround off, you're not going to lose too many men. Zhang Liao proving his worth yet again. I gotta adopt that boy. I gotta put him in my family tree. I gotta make sure he inherits the kingdom if Lu Bu ever dies. Hopefully he'll still be around by the time this campaign's over, but if not, it would not be a bad thing to have this monster at the helm of my empire. All right, so Lu Bu and Zhang Liao are doing what they do best, smashing some yellow turbans. We still have to worry about this big old stack that is within spinning distance of Chang An. They might be a problem, but we're going to bring Lu Bu back to deal with them. Maybe, maybe we can bait them out by attacking Wu Du Silk Trader and making them, forcing them back north, but I think they might still come this way. Chang An's got a garrison that should be able to defend itself pretty easily. We have finished up our assignments and we can now send them out on some new ones. So Lady Fang, not very happy with me. In fact, Niu Fu, Lu Cheng, and Lady Fang are all relatively unhappy because I'm not paying them a ton of money to be generals in my armies or giving them much to do. So Lady Fang has by far the most abilities that she can do on assignments. So what we're gonna do is move her into, let's take a look here, into the Chang'an Jade Mine, and we are going to give her the stimulate markets assignment because that should give us some more money and i like money i think it's kind of like the whole thing that keeps my economy running the lifeblood of my empire so we are going to give her that one and then zhu rong has a super good agricultural exploitation one that we're going to drop in on ding so if we put him on assignment there again that will be your job and that should really help out in terms of our overall food production because this is our bread basket we want him there that's where he does the best for me so we'll put him there and in a turn or so they should be in their assignments 
And these guys, I might have to drop them. Now, I haven't done too much research about these two in particular. I want to say that Neo Fu was relatively known under Dong Zhuo and was one of his generals, one of the ones that probably hung out with Guo Xi and some of the other dudes, Zhang Liao, in the wake of Lu Bu's betrayal. I don't know about Lu Cheng, and it's possible that neither of them were, but I do know that he, Guo Xi, was a uh, pretty big deal. And in fact, I think he actually did some fighting with Zhang Liao and with Lu Bu in the wake of the Siege of Sha Pi and stuff like that. So... We've got some generals that are not very happy. We might have to do something with them soon. If that means letting them go, we might have to do that. I don't really have the need for them at the moment. More importantly than even that stuff, though, we've got a reform. And this is the reform we've been working towards for so long now. And we're going to try to get it done. Oh, do I need one? No? Huh. Oh, wow, really? That sucks. Apparently, I'm going to need about 12 more turns invested before I can get to that. I need military markets and retainer armies, which makes sense because there are two branches leading to it. Okay, well, yikes. I don't want to do that yet. And in fact, I can't get to sharecropping either. So we are 30 turns away instead of like eight turns away from getting the two bonuses that I really wanted. I mean, we've been working towards this for so long now that we might as well just finish it. But yeah, I think that means we're going to have to go military markets and then retainer armies. Now, what does this building do? Gives us better mustering turns. Gives us better public order. Eh, it's not bad. And re lowered redeployment cost. We'll go military markets for now. Yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. Okay, that sucks. Reforms take a while, man. It takes a long time to get towards the end of this thing. I mean, you could get to 200 turns. You wouldn't be even close to finishing up this skill tree. But that's probably a good thing. It means that you get to specialize your empire in whatever way you see fit. Okay. So, Lubu, going to put pressure on the silk trader. Probably take that and hopefully force these guys in Hanjong to move northwards. And then we can take back the horse pastures. And then move towards a large city and finish off Gongdu for good. I think that's the game plan. We'll see if it works. So apparently today is the anniversary of the death of Dong Zhuo at the hands of Lu Bu and Chang'an. May 22nd was his death. So happy dead Donger Day. Saw that on Reddit. Found that pretty interesting. And apparently Niu Fu was actually one of Dong Zhuo's subordinates, and he died, if not on May 22nd, very shortly afterwards, and also had his head chopped off and sent to Chang'an. So, we are not going to let that happen to him yet. I feel like he could still be useful. Lu Chang, I looked him up, and I couldn't find anything about him. Maybe he's important, but I didn't see anything, and right now we're paying him 175 a turn to jerk off and look pretty. So, I don't think I really need him. I think we're gonna just release him from service. So goodbye. And that will give us a little bit more money too. Now, do we get a malice for releasing him? Is anyone upset about that? No. So I think when we played the Liu Bei campaign in early access, that there was a big malice when you did that. And I thought that was kind of dumb. Like it has nothing to, if he's your best friend, sure. Otherwise really shouldn't be a big deal. So. Yeah, I, it seems like that malice has gone away. I've not really seen it come into play here. He is relatively upset with us. We might find a use for him soon. Maybe put him in the counselor position. How much would that... That would change his salary relatively substantially. But it would also make him pretty happy. And it gives us more income from peasantry. Yeah, you know what? That ain't bad. Let's do that. I think that will make him happy because pretty much the biggest reason he's upset is that he wants a higher court position and he's not getting any... Well, he's not doing anything, right? So let's put him in the counselor position and see what happens there. It looks like he's actually... He has a little bit of hatred towards Zhang Liao and Liu Bu, but hopefully that sorts itself out. There is some harmony and disharmony going on in our court, but this is Three Kingdoms period, right? You're not, you can't have relationships without a little bit of hatred towards each other. You're not gonna, you're always gonna have some of that interfaction politicking. So, I'm not too worried about it. As I say that, we're gonna have a huge rebellion in Chang'an and lose the campaign next turn. Should be fun. Okay, so, 
We have forced the yellow turbans out, and they are moving towards Wu Du now. Another one just like crawled out of nowhere and is attacking. So they'll probably get there, but the garrison might be able to defend themselves. And up here, we are consolidating. And even though public order is in a pretty bad spot right now, it'll get ironed out at some point, I'd like to think. The population is just tiny though, it really is. At least in farmland, 124,000. Change a turn, eh, minus a thousand. We'll try to get that sorted out soon too. But Lady Fang, what are you upset about? I'm giving you stuff to do. You got to stop being pissed off about everything, man. I won't give you a higher court position because you're an administrator and you need to take care of your jobs. You're, you have a very important one. You are increasing the money I make from Chang'an and Jade Mine. Okay, I want to see what these yellow turbans do because they need to die. They are just a perpetual thorn in my side. And Lu Bu has uh, wet the ground with a lot of their blood. No, dude, we're not taking... Oh my god? That is a lot of money. I have never seen in diplomacy. Never in my life. I almost want to take that and then just betray him immediately. That's insane. That is so much gold. Dude, yeah. I mean, that that's probably going to piss a lot of other factions off. But, like, I've never seen the AI offer that much money for peace. Especially when they have a stack right near my territory. I mean, we could accept it and kind of roleplay it a bit. Even if it's not the best thing for our campaign. And just say, yo, I want that money and then turn around and kill you. Mmm. Yeah, dude. Like, that's so much money. Is done. Yeah, we're literally gonna turn around and take Han Jong back. If he walks right by my settlement, I'm just gonna kill the army. <laughs> oh man, you just gave us so much money for. I mean, this might make our diplomacy with other. Families. But I think everyone hates me anyway. Is the thing. Every time I see Zhu Rong, I'm like, bring Meng Huo's hot wife to the party from Dynasty Warriors. I don't know if you remember her. She is hotter than Diao Chan. She is hotter than any other fictional character in Three Kingdoms. Banging in Dynasty Warriors 4 Stream Edition. She needs to be in the game. I wonder if she'll be added in like a Nan Man DLC. She's dope. All right, so we've got a ton of money now. And Lu Bu is relatively upset with what the Yellow Turbans have been doing with me. So he's like, okay, you might pay me money, but I'm still gonna kill you. So let's take a look at our diplomacy real quick and see what everyone thinks of me. I mean, we're Lu Bu. Everybody hates us. Like, there's no question about that. So let's go to diplomacy. Oh, we're considered trustworthy now. But not after this. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, dude, we're already at war with, like, all of China. Like, does it really matter? Does it really matter? We know he's going to betray me at some point, too. We, we should probably do it before he's able... Yeah, we have him in... We can attack him right now. Ah, oh, he's gonna be able to escape, though. Dude, how did he force march that far? That's really far. I don't think we'll be able to actually kill him off on this turn. Hmm. Man. Like, we're rich. I, I guess we could just chill for a bit. And, um... Yeah, this guy's gonna show up now, too. God, our, our diplomacy is gonna take a big hit if we do that. And we could build up so much... But, you know what? We're not, we're not playing this campaign for any purpose but fun and for roleplay. If we're playing Lu Bu, this is exactly what he would do. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll deal with it. Nine turns. Whatever. Cut them down! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell was that? This is what I, I might actually be able to attack him anyway. But this is what I'm talking about, dudes. Like, sorry. I came from the bridge on this side. Went across, and you're telling me that he just ran across the same bridge my army just crossed to escape from me? There are some shenanigans in terms of movement. Army movement in Three Kingdoms right now that need to get sorted. That's crazy. That should not work. Alright. Big battle coming. Let's put him in the dirt. And then move towards Jincheng. 
That was some Machiavellian stuff right there. I feel dirty, and it feels good. I would have said Game of Thronesian kind of style right there, but, you know, last season everyone turned into an idiot, so it wasn't very Game of Thrones-ish because all the smart people turn into dumbasses. Anyway, Machiavellian should work just fine. Lu Bu taking a lot of money, 6,000 gold, turning around and killing the army that was walking by thinking they were safe. So yeah, we'll take that gold. Thanks for the cheese. We're coming to wipe out your empire, no biggie. Appreciate the tribute though. You've been annoying, so might as well take your gold before we slaughter you. Okay, Lu Bu and Junk, dude, you know what? Oh, man, night battles in this game. Look at, that is, that is actually special. Now we haven't hit start battle yet, so I don't think any of those things are moving. I think the lanterns will move when the battle starts, but God, that is, <laughs> Do you ever look up at the night sky and just think, like, how tiny we are inside the eyeball of a blue-eyed giant? No, seriously, the universe is just, like, trillions upon trillions of galaxies. And in our lifetime, we won't even... Maybe, in, maybe even in the entire existence of the human race, we will not even completely cover the Milky Way galaxy. We probably won't. It's probably too big. And the fact that there are trillions of those, and then you look up, and you see all those stars. That is gorgeous. Man, that is real pretty. That's the best skybox they've ever had in Total War game, I think. Sorry, I didn't mean to get all <laughs> philosophical on you guys. Alright, let's play some battles. Let's kill some stuff. Lu Bu and Zhang Liao. Let's get into it. Maybe we should go to Flaming Shot and burn down the forest. That might be pretty cool to watch. Alright. I am not going to try to pronounce that. I've never even seen that name before. Okay, so they are setting up at the edge of the forest. Plenty of yellow turbans. About to die for the way of peace. So peaceful. Sure. Let's watch him duel. He is right. He is right. Zhang Liao is going to make you fail. Where are you at? There he is. Oh! I don't really agree with that, but he does have a pole arm, which is probably why he won that initial clash. Here we go. So he's got the blade of Zhang Yu, which gives him like 1200 DPS, which is dirty. It feels like a lot of weapons in this game give you way better stats than just leveling up those. So I bet you he's winning. He is. And your while that happens, we'll move the rest of our enough. stuff into Do not position waste your breath. Yeah, we'll let you, you need it. start shooting. Uh, you're not going to have breath here in a second. Yeah, you're almost dead already. Fire everything! Oh, light the night sky. Oh, that is so cool. What I haven't checked yet is if guys actually get set on fire. I don't think- no, they don't. They just fall over dead. That's kind of disappointing. Remember in Medieval 2? When fire, fire shots would actually turn guys on fire? I hope you don't die in the middle of this tree. I will say those fire effects are completely gorgeous though. I just like to see them actually <laughs> dry humping the air for a second. It was pretty cool. All right, finish him. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's gonna look so sick with the blood pack. Oh my god! All right, get on your horse. Let's mount up. Oh, they're coming in to fight. All right, Lubu, it's time. It's time for the infantry. Attack! That is so cool looking. Alright, we should kill the archers. Well, they have more of an army there than I was expecting. Alright, here they come. I'm gonna let them actually get some peasant shaman on top of me. And you guys... Where are you at? Did I leave you guys all the way? I left them all the way behind. Alright, let them group up. And then... Rage of Lubu. Actually, we'll charge them into all those. Our archers are taking a lot of damage. We're gonna actually have to back them up. 
And hopefully we can catch the tail end of- Yeah, okay! Just a casual 85 kills. Kill get you out. You're starting to take some damage there. And you guys. Now we'll have to lock the group first. No. Yeah, okay, there we go. Perfect. Uh, we'll decline that. Yeah, they routed off that. Wow. It's crazy. No. And we're going to... Decline all duels. Automatically reject them. Okay. Now you. Get into the archers because they're doing a lot of damage. Lubu, where are you at? Take heed, warriors. Move out quickly. Gotta route all this stuff. And then the cavalry. Where the, where's the cavalry? Yeah. Right, the enemy warriors are running. Yeah, we took a little bit too much damage on our archers there. Because I was busy watching all the beautiful visuals. Zhang Liao's in the cookie jar now. So is Lubu. And we'll use this again. No, my where my cam at? Turn off hide foliage. Alright, run down those peasant warriors. Lance cav, get in here. Make ready. To kill the generals is over. Do not One step closer to victory. That should be a mass route. We just need one rear charge into the center portion here. So you fire into the rear. You guys get a rear charge. Yeah, that's the happy Shilong cav. The time has come! I, I, when I first played this battle, when I watched it back, I didn't realize how short the cooldown on this thing is. 30 second cooldown. I could have easily had 1500 kills in that first battle of this. Blade, ready! Blade, prepare! Yes, yes! Good! Alright, we're gonna turn off fire at will. And watch that cab charge coming from behind! Wow, that's gorgeous. All right, well, I guess I didn't oh, just, uh, stop. More charges. We're going to get one more charge in. You get in there as well. The enemy unit flees. Last round should be coming. Line this baby up. Let's go. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. All right. Pop that. Go, go, go. Does battle wear you out? If only wars were won with witty words. They could work on that diplomacy. But <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> the way they talk to each other. Prepare. If I didn't say anything witty, you don't need to mention how not witty I am. The enemy warriors are running. Ha! No, no mercy. Wow, it's a gorgeous game. Okay. Flaming arrows burning down the trees, burning the countryside, burning the peasants. Lu Bu in the thick of it with Wu Jing and his homie. And that's a mass route. Perfect. All right, so we took too many losses on our archers, but besides that, not too many will have to heal up. Move away from those flaming trees. And heavy Zulong cavalry showing its worth again. I really think that executing should give you intimidation. That's what I think. So I think we will release you. Is that like money? I have little need. And for you, I will execute. So you just Silence got unlucky. Them. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry about it. <laughs> All right, unit replenishment. I don't think is really necessary. I like that income though. That's a lot of income. Let them go. That they remember my mercy. An unstoppable rise. You are right. We are unstoppable. I like the political game in Free Kingdoms, man. It's fun. It's completely different than we've ever seen in Total War game before. Warhammer could learn a lot from it if they decide to go that route. The only thing that's weird about it is like, I wonder because they're focusing so much on unit mechanics and unit variety in Warhammer, I don't know if they'll go ever decide to go anywhere near as in depth with the diplomacy as they have here, simply because the unit variety and the battlefield tactics aren't going to be as varied in Three Kingdoms, obviously, just as a function of the time period and the setting. But man, it would be very cool to see that in Warhammer and Act it's something quickly. that Three Kingdoms does incredibly well. I've already seen in 20 or 25 turns of Three Kingdoms campaign, so many diplomatic 
options come up that actually got utilized that have never appeared in any Total War game before, which I think is really dope. I mean, just like that, like, Gong Du, spending 6,000 to no longer be at war with me, and then me immediately being able to attack, like, that could have happened in other Total War games, but it was still pretty rare. But I've seen some people offer to give me food to get off their ass, that kind of thing. Like, there's just a lot of options there that we've never seen before. So we got back Wudu Sil Trader, we wiped out an army. They're gonna be mad. Madness. Madness. I don't think... No, this is not Sparta, dude. This is Three Kingdoms China. I think Wudu can actually defend itself. If we take a look... Is that the... Yeah, that's the town. So, the garrison... Mm, Absolutely not. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe can defend itself. So, we'll move on Jin Chang and hope that they can hold out. But we still have to worry about the Wudu Copper Mine. That takes us like five turns to cross over there, too. Okay, so we also want Han Zhang back because that was actually making like 400 a turn. So we want that. Intimidation is rising and things are looking pretty good. Characters. Oh, Lu Bu leveled up. It's been a while. It has been a long time. Okay, this is interesting. What do we go for? So we could go for the Dragon's Gaze. This gives melee evasion and melee attack rate to an enemy if we cast it on them. Nice debuff. We go for Guile. Gives us better Ambush. We've been using Ambush a lot, so that's not bad. Smoldering Fury. Dang. 400% armor piercing damage in phase 5 as a passive. That's pretty crazy. But he already hits like a truck. I'm not sure I want melee evasion to go down to minus 100% because that means he just takes damage. Rage of Lu Bu. We already have this stuff. Get Clarity. Building upkeep. Line of sight. Hmm. I like that. That seems like a really good debuff if we're about to go into a duel. And we already have Zeal. I guess we'll see what... Okay, so this would give us 25% melee damage for all shot, cal shot cavalry in his retinue. Replenishment? Ooh. Ooh. I think we want that then. I think we just go for this so that we can get replenishment afterwards. Yeah. I don't know if this will require both or just the one, but we'll go for Guile for now because I really want replenishment. Anything we can do to stack that up is super good. So we'll go for that. And Liang Jing also leveled up. And we'll go for Diligence. Okay. So that is out of the way. We are making a lot of money now. We've made 20,000. And we've got 900 a turn coming in. So I think we can start recruiting more in the second army again. It's been a while, but I think it's about that time. So that's what we'll do. We are going to get a new dude up in here. And I think it'll be Neofu. Man, he is expensive though. Upkeep cost per turn. Coming in with that retinue. It's not a great one. All right, so we spent a little bit of money to get him back into our armies. He should be happy now. He is indeed. Okay. Let's get rid of a few of these and see what kind of units we can actually build. Swap them out. So we could build some peasant raiders, some light spear cavalry. Raiders, mountain saber militia are pretty strong. Let's make him more of a cavalry commander. So let's drop... A few of these archers, as amazing as... Mm, let's drop one of each, actually. Get some nice cav there. And An Ding is one turn away from finishing up. So I, I think that this is the best spot we've been in in the campaign so far. We're making a lot of money. We're starting to build up our second army again. We have made a ton of gold off of the stupid idiot over here, Gongdu. And he's going to die pretty hard soon. 
And we're gonna move towards Jin Chang. But first, we gotta get rid of that army. So, let's do some housekeeping stuff, and I'll see you back in a turn or two. Alright, I wanna finish this war for good. The conquest. So, it'll take a little bit longer before we're able to get there. But Jin Chang will fall next turn, and then we can take the large city. And I think... No, it won't. It won't finish up, because we gotta finish up Wu Du as well. So this war might drag on a little bit longer than I'd like. I don't actually care about this army now because they're taking attrition and I don't think they could actually take the large town even if they wanted to. So they're just going to kind of stand around there and they will probably die. We're building up this army again. We are in the negative now, but that's not a really big deal because they're going to start actually conquering stuff like the fishing port, maybe even the town right there. So they'll start paying for themselves here. No longer do I think I should just be standing around with a half-made army. Just kind of playing border patrol. I think I need to get a little bit more aggressive on multiple borders now. Because I think I can afford it. And then we'll take Hanjong back soon. So I think what we're going to do here. Take a look at Anding. That leveled up. It's a small city now. We can level up our workforce distribution office. And I think that's exactly what we will do. So we'll get more income from the peasantry. And after that, we can then build a second building here and maybe do something for public order, which has been an issue. So we'll worry about that next part, but I think that we're going to end part three here. And this will go up before Three Kingdoms is out for everybody. But I hope you guys enjoyed the game. We will be doing more parts of this Lubu campaign, especially if it keeps getting views. I will keep uploading how it's always worked. So hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. And... Part 3 should be up before you guys get your hands on the game. In fact, it'll be up on May 22nd, uh, late evening, or early evening, I think. And then tomorrow, I hope you guys enjoy getting your hands on the game for the first time. Let me know which campaign you guys are planning on playing first. Dong Zhuo will not be easily or readily available for most of you, but there are a lot of good ones. Liu Bei looks like a lot of fun. Cao Cao looks like a lot of fun. And the Soon family as well. So, I will see you guys next time. Part four should be dropping by uh, maybe hopefully the end of the week. And we also have to do some tic-tac-toe and some multiplayer oh, shenanigans as well. So peace out and I'll see you next time.